Hi, this is Steve, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Divine Right version 1.04. So Divine Right is a strategy game for iOS. A comparison would be maybe a little bit of Panzer General, maybe a little of Battles of West Noth, and a little of Kohan. Essentially, you build your economy, build your army, and then try to defeat your enemy on the field of battle. This is the main screen for Divine Right. As you can see, you have options um, for up to four players and the scoundrel. Um, I don't know what we want to do with the scoundrel. Maybe we'll keep him not playing for now. So team one human, that could be me. Team two computer, that could be the computer. Uh, maybe I'll take an ally. So I'll have team one computer and I'll give him an ally, which would be a team two computer. I can change whether I want a man, a random or a default map, change the size of the map. We'll go with a relatively small size. The computer gold right here determines, well, basically the computer advantage. And that looks about right for a couple turns just to show you some features. So here's the main screen. This is my first castle, Ducal Camp. This is the economy screen. Um, here you manage how much food, material, or gold you produce. Right now, at the default, I would be increasing my population by 10, producing no material, no gold. The problem is my population is already maxed out at 50 out of 50. This button over here would allow me to upgrade my castle, which is something you definitely want to do. But when I press it, I get told to select the focus. The focus is something new in 1.04. And here you determine what you want the castle to focus on. This doesn't make it less effective at the other things it does. It simply makes it better at one thing. Marshall would make better units. Farming makes you produce more food, hence grow your population faster. Material, you build more material. Gold, you build more gold. To start this, I think I'm going to go farming because people are very, very important. And I will upgrade my castle because I have enough money. There we go. When I upgrade the castle, you see the visibility range of my castle increases. It'll keep doing that as it expands. And you see where I was, a plus 10 people. Now I'm plus 20 people because my farming has become more effective. Right now, however, I don't really think that farming is the only thing that's important. So I'm going to try to get some gold in my pocket. And I need to create a unit so I can see what's going on. So you can see there's a lot of black space right now. You can see my colleague, my ally right here. He hasn't had his turn yet, but all that black space between us is a little bit dangerous. On this map size, I'm not sure whether I'm going to have time to build or space to build another castle. Uh, we'll find that out in a minute. What I'm going to do right now is just build an unarmored, so basically no armor, cheap pike unit, basically a guy carrying a nice big stick. He's relatively cheap to build at 12 gold and relatively cheap to maintain at 2 material, so I will recruit him. When he's recruited, he can't do anything for a turn. You can click on him. He's first pike, but he can't explore until the next turn. So I press end. Now we get to see everybody else doing their turns. You can see my friend. He's built a whole bunch of, of horsemen to run around and explore the map, which is a very smart thing to do. Each one of the AIs has their own unique personality and strategy. So playing one is not the same as playing the other. Some are better than others, um, and some it really depends on the situation. So here we are with my unit. I am going to start wandering down to see what I can find and take another look at my economy. As my population grows, um, I can produce more. So getting your population near that max is very important. Also, when you build units, you decrease your population by about five. So, you know, it's a, it's a balance. Right now, our economy is minus two, which isn't enough to worry about. And... I think I may just go another turn before I do anything else. Ah, the enemy. So it looks like the scouts from my ally have found the scouts for the prince. And I assume they're going to start fighting. That tells me that the prince is probably down here. But it also... Ah, oh, there we go. Now, this is important. He's already upgraded that castle. But by standing there, I put the castle under, under siege, which is going to stop him from being able to um, automatically repair units when they're within the adjacent squares. It's also going to um, limit his or stop his ability to create new units there. And it's going to decrease the castle's strength by one every turn while I hold the siege. Although I fear that little guy is not going to be enough to hold the siege for a while. So I will try to build something else, maybe something a little bit stronger, although I don't really have any money. Um, so I've picked the weapon Morningstar, which is a bonus against castles, because I'm planning on doing a siege. And I can afford light armor. Might even be able to afford medium. Nope. 
I can form light armor. I can manage the armor um, through head, chest, legs, hands, or I can press the armor set button. You'll find yourself pressing the armor set button a lot and then just modifying it a little to get something you can afford or something that has the specs that you like. So I'll recruit that and present to He's upgraded that again. If we can take that castle, we would be in, in tremendous shape because that looks like a, a two-upgrade castle to me. Plus, I'm interested to know what kind of focus it has. Over here, my man, has, it looks like he's lost a unit. He's built a couple more. It might keep him busy for a while. We'll see. Uh, obviously, because he is in a nice little battle with... Um, with my ally, he's not worrying about me as much as he perhaps should. Let me go back up. Right now I'm minus 13 on material, so I'm just going to do one quick click on material. That'll um, get me to, a, to the plus 30 gold that I'd really prefer to be. We'll give this one more turn before we try to siege the castle. So he is now here. Um, he attacked me with his little short sword swordsman. What I'm going to do get rid of him because pikes men are very very good against horses especially unarmed ones and let's see if I can actually take this city here you get to see me gain a level um, every level they gain they get five additional points to spend on things I'm going to make him stronger a little bit faster and a little bit more defense and now hopefully this Nope, can't do anything there. We're almost out of time, and I still haven't shown you elite units, which is a little disappointing. But maybe I'll get lucky, and he will have upgraded this to an elite. So there, I took his big giant castle. Now I can take a look at it. It's the Prince's Palace. Oh, uh, he's upgraded it to material, so he just, just produces that a little bit more. Um, nobody seems to be producing elite units right now. But the fact is, if you had selected to focus on um, Marshall, then when you build units they get a slightly different graphic and they're stronger and then the more you upgrade your castle just like the rest of these um, focuses the better they get at that focus so i don't think i've shown you a lot of the things that we we um, improved in 1.4 the ai obviously got improved um, the ranges visual ranges changed strengths of everything and costs of everything changed a lot of a lot of changes a much much improved game let me just go back here and just go look at the current stats. Uh, we don't have the scoundrel playing, which is why you see this. Um, on the stats, you can see exactly how you've been doing compared to your enemies, your gold produced, your castles captured, built, upgraded, everything you'd like to know to be able to refine your strategy. And it looks like that is about all of our time. I hope you guys enjoy the game, and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.